Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed that throwback. That's what friends are for. Some of you, you may not have even remembered that song. I think that song is probably at least 20 years old. I just wanted to play that song today because we've been talking about friends. Listen, we've been staying on this a minute because it's such an expansive subject matter. And I believe that we are actually in a friend pandemic. Come on. I know we're in a pandemic with COVID, but I believe there's a friend pandemic that it, it is extensive worldwide uh, issue and problem and concern of the relational um, aspect of how we relate to one another as humans, as friends, as neighbors, and what those core... Um, uh, qualities should look like that should start in our home and start in our families. And I believe that that is one of the things that is destroying, we can call it friendship, but it really starts in the home because that's where you learn to be friends. That's where you learn uh, as, as brothers and sisters, come on. And your mama teach you uh, to share. You, you learn not to be selfish. You learn to have to serve one another and to look out for one another. All those things are friendship qualities. And somewhere along the line, somewhere along with latch, latchkey children, we would call them back in my day, somewhere, on along, oh, somewhere along the line, we have lost a lot of these friendship capacities. And so that's why we're talking about this because it's not just natural, but it is natural, but it's also spiritual. Listen, I know that was a long introduction. Welcome to Naomi's Corner. I'm Apostle Darlin C. Turner, and I am the founder of Naomi's Corner. What's Naomi's Corner? Naomi's Corner is the place that we come together as women but also as the bride of Christ, we're both natural and spiritual, a, a gathering place for both. Come on, so it's not gen just particularly gender related because it's also included in the body of Christ, but it's t a time to gather and galvanize and to advance the kingdom of heaven. But talk about those things that need to be talked about from a biblical stance and a biblical approach. And so for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about friendship. Have you all been enjoying? Come on, let me know in the comments. Have you been enjoying friendship? Listen, tell me what you've learned. Send in your testimonies. Send it in to Naomi's Corner at yahoo.com if you have been blessed at all by Naomi's Corner. And particularly, uh, we are looking for uh, friends to uh, come on the show. If you want to come on the show, uh, we would love to have you. Um, and I want to tell you about this. I, you know, I might as well, I'm just jumping ahead of myself, but I might as well mention it now. Tonight, tonight, we are going to be on Clubhouse, me and my girlfriends. I thought I was going to have a video for you all with my girlfriends, but that didn't work out. But maybe next week. Because we'll still be on friendship next week. But this is going to be a, a very uh, great opportunity for you all to talk to me and my girlfriends directly on Clubhouse. Okay? So, listen. This is called Girlfriends. Those are my girlfriends right there. Pastor Rhonda, Prophet Sharon, and myself in the middle. The DNA of friendship. We're going to be talking about that tonight, Friday, May 21st at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. What do you do? Download the Clubhouse app. Now, you do have to be referred, so I hope that you can get some friends and get some referrals and get on there with me tonight. And I'm not going to be here with you long because I want you to be on tonight where we're going to get to talk about a whole lot of things about just friendships and the DNA of friendships. Now, this is this is Naomi's Corner. And this, you know, I 
uh, really talk more from a biblical uh, standpoint with scriptures and all of that during my Facebook uh, broadcast, but on Clubhouse, on Clubhouse, okay? It's not going to be Bible study on Clubhouse. On Clubhouse, we're going to be talking about a lot of the real deal. Now, am I saying it's not a real deal? No, it's not any different from Bible study. But how many know that there's some things, come on here, that you just don't need to say on Facebook? There's some things and some wisdom that you need to share privately. And that's what that's what uh, our Girlfriends Network is all about. So listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to download the face. I'm sorry, the Clubhouse app if you don't have it. And I want you to meet me on Clubhouse tonight. Listen, Android users, guess what? Y'all have gotten converted, and now Android users can now get on Clubhouse too. Yay, we're so happy to have you. All right, so meet me at 6 with me and my girlfriends. It's going to be a wonderful time. We're going to be networking. We're going to be talking about how to identify friends. We're going to be answering your questions. Come on, we want to talk about some of these things about women. And, you know, I, you know I've been looking at, I don't know if, if this is any of you think about these kinds of things, but I think about a lot of the women and, and, and uh, women of God and some that we know we just lost a great woman of God yesterday. Um, and I've often wondered, do they, did they have friends? Um, and, you know, what I found with a lot of, uh, especially women in the body of Christ, they don't really have friends. When I ask them, like, do you have friends? They go, well... Uh, you know, when you have to do that, you know, those, those, you don't really have friends. You might have associates, people, you know, right. But friendships are so critical. Friendships are healing. There is a friendship pandemic. I want the, especially the kingdom of God to wake up. We got to do something about that. That says something about us. As you all, if you have been watching at any, any amount of time, this friendship series, I have broken down for you why it's, it matters and why it's important. Because Jesus said, I don't want you to be a servant. I want you to be a friend. And so friendship is a spiritual realm. It is a realm of intimacy that even Jesus desires for us to ascend to. Now, if we don't know how to be a friend in the natural, how in the heck are you so tight with Jesus? I just want to know. I'm asking for a friend. Okay. <laughs> I'm asking. No, I'm really asking for me. Okay. How in the world are we so deep with God and we don't have any friends in the natural? Now, if, if, if I was a scholar, come on, I would say now, if we look at the pattern of the Bible, of the scriptures, there is a law called the law of the natural. And we see that with everything with God. Come on, he says, listen, if you don't take care of mammon, if you don't, uh, I'm paraphrasing, if you, we can't trust you with unrighteous mammon or money, how can I trust you with the true riches? If you can't love your, love your brother that you can't see, how, come on, are you going to love a God uh, that you cannot, I'm sorry, if you can't love a brother that you can't see, how can you love a God that you don't see? Come on, if you're going to be a bishop over my house, you got to make sure you uh, uh, rule your house well. So everything with God is first the natural, then the spiritual. So how, how, how are you so tight with God? Come on. A, a, a one from day one with God and have no friends in the natural. Listen, friendship is spiritual. Friendship is important. There's a friendship pandemic. And I want us to begin to deal with this because a lot of it stems from selfishness. And the scriptures actually tell us in the book of Proverbs that a person that's selfish, I'm paraphrasing the, the essence of the scripture, will not have good judgment. So that's why some of us are not good friends. And some of you who are, are I, I, I'm, I'm getting the word of the Lord for that right now. Some of you have been asking what is up with that particular friend. That's what the Lord 
uh, has given for me to tell you that's the issue that they are selfish and selfishness according to the Bible will always breed bad judgment they cannot have sound judgment because people who are always thinking about themselves and only thinking about themselves that are protecting themselves and operate in the realm of selfishness it's impossible for them to make good decisions and have good judgment because their judgment is always limited to their own outcome, to their own world, and to those things that relate and tie back to them, which means that it will not be broad. It will not be all inclusive. Come on. And it's not going to be something that's for the good of the whole. So that's your answer. It's a selfish spirit. And so you need to, uh, you know, pray about that, but you know, the Holy spirit will guide you into your particular situation about what you need to do with that relationship and with that situation. Cause this is the bottom line. I mean, you know, uh, if a person doesn't want to change, um, you know, our prayers don't override their will. So when you're dealing with selfishness, you're doing, you're dealing with a, a, a serious spirit. And, and again, uh, no one with any kind of um, real self-esteem uh, really uh, 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 will ever be very close to someone who's extremely selfish because you're gonna uh, that person's gonna always end up pushing people away because because after a while you know the law of reciprocity nobody wants to uh, hang around a person that's always thinking about themselves. It's going to always be what they want to do. And then when you, when it's time for them to give a little, to be inconvenienced a little, then they're going to, you know, not let you forget it or have a bad attitude or bring it up all the time and, you know, all of that. But then they don't ever consider, you know, all the things that you've done, what you've sacrificed and things you've done. Does that sound like somebody you know? Or is does that sound like you? Listen, if that sounds like you, that means that you need a little friendship one-on-one, -on -one, and you in particular need to be on Clubhouse on tonight, okay? Because let's get this friend stuff together. It's time to get this together because if we're going to be a friend of God, we got to first become friends one with the other, all right? So I'm just going to give you, you know, I gave you all a couple of scriptures last time. We've talked about you know, different things about friendship. I've given you some great scriptures. I'm going to recap a couple of them that I think are really, really critical. Of course, we know uh, uh, the Bible says greater has no, uh, no man, than, no greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. That's in John 15, 13 through uh, 15. So we know friendship again, there's no greater love than a friend that lays down his life. The, and another scripture says that there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Listen, I, did, did I tell you friendship is deep? If you really study the scriptures about friendship, we need to preach about this a little bit more. Come on. Because it's used as an example of what God wants us to ascend to. It's used as the example of, 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 of no greater love than a brother. Come on, to, to, to lay down his life for a friend. Why would he say brother? See, I, I believe that, you know, the reason why he didn't say mother or father is because, you know what, that's a natural love. We, you know, it's, it's, when we have children, they come here with our extreme love and dedication to them. But for a brother, for someone that's not your, your seed, not your blood, and you are willing to lay down your life, for them, no greater love. Come on here. Because this, this isn't your family per se. This isn't something that is natural to you. But this is somebody who has extended past the bloodline. Y'all better help me here. And have decided to lay down their life. He said, oh, there's no greater love than that. My God. There's no greater love than that. I, I, I know a mother will lay down her life. I know a father will lay down a life. But a friend? that lays down on life, no greater love. Listen, don't you want friends like that? Let me ask you another way. Do you want to be a friend like that? Some of y'all, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm, 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 I'm looking at your face right now in the spirit. Come on now. Listen, 
this is deep. This is deep. I, I, I just, you know what? I'm just realizing this myself, just how many scriptures are in the Bible about friendship. And I've given you all several. I'm just recapping a few and we're going to get on out of here. Proverbs 18 and 24 says, one who has unreliable friends soon come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Come on, there's another one. Unreliable friends bring you to ruin. So you got to watch your friends. You got to be choicy about your friends. You, you, It's important because they do influence you. Come on. Evil communications corrupt good manners or good intentions. The people you are around do impact you. They impart to you. They shift your mindset. So you got to know what you're dealing with, who you're hanging around. But a friend that sticks close to than a brother, listen, here we go again with that friend, that friend who will be better to you than your own blood, that friend. See, for many of us, that's exactly what you are missing. You are missing the friend. You are missing the friend. And some of you, uh, you me and a friend was just talking about this, how growing up, you know, we were indoctrinated when I was a little girl. Our best friends were our cousins, okay? Our parents wouldn't even let us go anywhere else. Like, th those are your friends, your cousins. But let's, how many you know, once you get older and as your world expands, you need to expand your friendship, expand your circle. That's the word of the Lord, somebody watching. You need to expand your friendship. And guess what? Get on here on Clubhouse and start meeting some new people, getting around some quality people and expanding your diversity. I'm talking to whoever is watching. Listen, some of you may be Caucasian or Asian or, or some other race, religion. Listen, it doesn't matter what religion, what ethnicity. We're talking about friendship. We, we're not going to be having Bible study tonight. We're talking about friendship. Yes, I, you know, I reference the word of God because that's what's in me, but we're really going to be talking about practical things and things that um, make us friends and that, um, you know, look like friendship, sound like friendship, so we can begin to be more skilled in our relationship skills. Come on, people. Proverbs 27, 5 through 6 says this, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an enemy multiplies kisses. Isn't that something? The Bible tells us that friends, friends, the people who have proven themselves to be friends, in other words, people who have shown that they love you, know that they love you. There's no doubt about it. Want the best for you. But when they have to wound you or when they hurt your feelings, or when they tell you something, that you don't like. Yeah, I'm talking to you. God is talking to you today. You you didn't like what your friend told you and it's made you mad. But listen, that wound can be trusted. In other words, you can't just accept your friend when they're doing something for you, when they're sacrificing for you, when they're blessing you, when they're giving you money, when they're giving you a present. Come on. And then when it's time for them to correct you, when they let you know you're not right about something, come on. When they have to tell you the truth about yourself, tell you you've been selfish or tell you something that hurts your ego, you know what? You need to trust that wound and not be a uh, juvenile in your emotions and then begin to withdraw from that person who have shown you through too much of their life and their history that they are on your side that they are for you, and that they love you. I'm talking to somebody today. Listen, that's a wound to be trusted. And you, my sister, you, my brother, need to grow up. Because a friend that has shown you that they are friends, sometimes, if they're a real friend, they're going to tell you the truth about yourself. They're going to say, listen, you know what? That's not wrong. I mean, that's not right. I don't agree with that. I have some friends we are so real with each other and sometimes we hurt each other's feelings, but you know what we, we know, okay, you get over it because you know, I love you. And if I'm telling you something, even if what I'm telling you agrees with what your enemies say, like my husband used to say, your enemies ain't wrong about everything. Okay. Some of the stuff they say about you is true. 
So those are the things that you need to deal with because when your friends start telling you, you can trust that wound. You can trust that feedback. And that's where you and I need to grow up. Oh, y'all better help me today. Oh, I can't wait to have this conversation on tonight in Clubhouse, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Listen, I told you I'm not going to be here long with y'all today because we're going to have a conversation tonight. I want you to get relaxed on this Friday night. I want you to bring your girlfriend. Come on, bring some girlfriends. I want you to post this on your social media and invite people to come because we want to fellowship with you. And by the way, we started a girlfriend network. So when you download and follow me, let me put this back up here. Follow me, follow Pastor Rhonda Allison, follow Prophetess Shan Randolph. You see the handles right there. When you do that and you download, I want you to Follow us, and then at the top, you're going to see a little greenhouse. Click that greenhouse, and you're going to see the Girlfriend Network. And I want you all to join our network so you'll be notified. We come on every other Friday, and we are building a network of women that desire to grow, desire to network with other women of quality, women that desire to operate in integrity, women who want to change the earth and make an impact while we are here, but also that will withstand the test of time even into, into eternity, okay? So listen, I want to see you all join the, the Girlfriends Network. We got a lot in store, a great vision for the Girlfriends Network. It started on Clubhouse, but we're going to be doing a whole lot of things together, conferences, traveling. Once we can get all this travel thing back, listen, me and my girlfriends have gone all around the world. And some of you, you've been saying you going around the world. You ain't going nowhere until one of your girlfriends help you, just like I had to help them sisters over there, okay, that you just saw. Okay, they be talking until I do something about it, okay? And and make let them say something about that and see if that's not true, okay? So some of you all, listen, I want you to go with me to Europe. Uh, come on, let's go. You've been saying you're going to do You ain't going to do it until I plan and help you plan this trip. So we're going to be going all over the world as girlfriends, having a wonderful time, living our best life and showing people how to do this girlfriend thing and eliminating, come on, this friendship pandemic through the vaccination, come on, of the word of God and the spirit of God and the spirit of love and true friendship that will annihilate all of this division and strife and everything that has come against our society that we don't even know how to be friends, that husband and wives don't know how to be friends. Come on. The siblings don't know how to be friends. It's a daggone shame. Come on, people of God. So that is what we're doing in the Girlfriend Network. And I can't wait to see you. Listen, as uh, before I close, I want to give you an opportunity because just like the Girlfriend Network, Naomi's Corner is all about women, encouraging women, blessing women, that's what I do, honey. That's what I do. And I do it for a living, if you will. Uh, I, many of you know, I started the National Widows Association to help widows. And we're helping widows locally, nationally, internationally, building homes in Africa and in the Philippines. Honey, we doing a whole lot of stuff all over the place and a lot of things for women because women are my heart, because you are the crown of creation, and I want you to know how great you are. But one of the things that's also very close to my heart, as I said, is the National Widows Association, and I dedicate this broadcast every single Friday to them. And so when you give, when you give on this Naomi's Corner broadcast, this broadcast is dedicated to the National Widows Society. Listen, so I'm hoping that they have this information here. Here we go. Hallelujah. I would love for you to donate whatever the Lord would give you to 
the National Widows Association. Some of you have seen already. I want to show this for some of you who have not seen it already. Uh, this is just one of the real pictures now. This was a home that um, one of our widows was living in, in Africa. It, come on here. That was their little mud home that they have. And so what we're doing is we're building homes. So this is the building of the home uh, for this widow here uh, that we are doing. You see that? These are the homes that we are building um, in Africa. And those are actual pictures. We did not get them off the internet and just showing you something. Those are actual pictures. We work in tandem with uh, Apostle Ashley Estrada. So Ashley Estrada Ministries. And so we, matter of fact, I told them keep sending the names. We're going to get some videos to show you all because this is for real. This is the real deal. And, and we're loving it because we're building homes every single month. And I can only do it with the help of those of you who have a heart to help this vision, help women all over the world. And I'm so grateful. And listen, God says he blesses those that bless the widow. He said that he will bless all the works of your hands. So I want to pray for those right now who will give a generous seed on today to help us to meet our May goal because every single month we have made a pledge. And so it's by faith, just by faith, we're operating to be able to do what we do. And so we do it by the help of our generous supporters and those who know how to be friends. Come on here. So you're being a friend to someone that you don't even know, but isn't that what God said when he, uh, we saw the parable of the, the good Samaritan. He didn't know that man. Come on. But the priest and the, and the uh, I forget the other one, but both of them was religious. Come on. They, they walked right on by the man. And look, he was up for dead. But, but it was the Samaritan that took care of him, took him to the hotel and paid his bill. Listen, we got a lot. And you, we talking about being friends. You don't have to know somebody to be a friend. It's about being uh, operating in the spirit of love and humanity for those who are in need. And there are many who are in need and you can help us with whatever donation we would be eternally grateful. Let me pray over your seed. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for those who will obey your voice and who will be a friend to those whom, of whom names they do not know. But God, I pray that you will bless them. And more than pray, God, I know that your word declares that you bless those that bless the widow and the fatherless and the poor, and you bless all the works of their hands. So, Father, we simply put you in remembrance of your promises. You are not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent. And so, God, the Father, we thank you that even as they sow, God, that you will let them know, you will show them the impact of that seed as you multiply it, that they will be able to trace it and track it right back to this seed to the widow, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because God, you said when they lend to the poor, they, I'm sorry, when they give to the poor, that they lend to you. And so Father, as the lender is subject to the borrower, we thank you, Father, for the great favor and the great grace that you place upon them as they give to the poor and give to those that have need. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, I promise you, you're going to see a return on your seed whenever, not just here, but that's the scripture. When you give to the poor, when you give to the widow, when you give to the fatherless. Some of you, that's what you're missing. You know, I know saints, they give them tithes, but that's it, honey, and they got it to the penny. Come on. 128.01. Hello. Or <laughs> my husband would say someone wouldn't even round it up a dollar. Listen, the tithe belongs to God. You're not even given until you give a seed, until you be, but then when you really come on, get converted and you really walk in the spirit of God, then you're gonna begin to sow. You're gonna begin to sow. Tithing is one level. 
offering is another level, but sowing, oh my God, that's a whole nother realm of harvest and reward and inheritance. And listen, we don't have time for that because that would be a whole nother message. I, that We probably need to make that a Bible study because it is a, a way of warfare because I got to know God through my seed by giving just as I'm encouraging you to give. That's how I knew God was real because he did some miracles for me. And you know what? One day I'm going to tell you all about them because if I hadn't experienced it, I wouldn't believe believed it either. But God blessed me supernaturally from sowing just as you have an opportunity to sow today. All right. God bless you. Listen, I want to see you all tonight. Where? Clubhouse, 6 p.m. That's Central Standard Time. All right. Hope to see y'all there. Bring your girlfriend. Talk to y'all next week.